Put this thing on. Welcome to Question and Answer Wednesday. <coughs> The worst is when you're gonna film, of course by myself majority of the time. You start to film, you start choking on just your own spit and saliva. Horrible situation. Lucky for me, I'm at my trapping house. So I'm gonna give you just a couple quick updates, quick rundown on some stuff. I'm here because today I didn't get to spend a day in the woods, but I did get to work on some awesome products at our shop. And I just been running around like crazy and and it was important to me to get this done today I was supposed to do it at noon. I helped move a gun safe with one of my friends. It turned into mayhem Absolute mayhem, but here we are getting it done now, and this is a really cool location if you're new to my channel um, This is like sort of I feel like where it all started just loads of gear It's slowly getting taken out of here and put in our warehouse. I have a section for myself. I just I, it's slower than expected. Reason for that, it's like, you know when you have something that you really love, like you have this special man cave, and that's what this place is to me, and then all of a sudden it's it's not gonna be here anymore. It's gone. It's, it's not. It's almost heartbreaking in some sense, but then I love the warehouse so much more. So it's like a toss up, but it's just like I'm holding on to every last thread of this space. Now I hope that the lighting here is pretty cool too. Um, I mean, it should be like studio lighting, you know? Almost like movie star kind of stuff, but all right, let's just get the question and answer. If you're new to this, basically what happens is on a Wednesday, I do question and answer. You, my audience, 88,000 and some hundred, that's awesome, on road to 100,000. Anyway, you people ask me questions or leave them in the comments below. So like in this video, you leave a question below, serious, maybe funny, We'll see what's up, and then the next time I do question and answer, I might answer it, if you're lucky. Now, as most of you know, I've been just using my phone here to scroll through, so if I do skip your question and it was like super important to you, nail biting super important, then uh, leave it in the next, uh, leave it there again. Sooner or later, I'll get to it. Okay, so let's go Blue Angel. We started out, I didn't know what it was, then I read about it and it was like a flaming shot and then somebody said, no, 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 Blue Angel is lighting a fart with a ferro rod. I have not gotten time to experiment, let alone perfect this technique. There were several comments about this. I'm gonna get to the point that we figure it out. I'm gonna have to, I'm not gonna be able to do it myself. Somebody's gonna have to fart, I'm gonna have to strike the rod. It, it's pretty disgusting, but we'll figure it out. Who won the Y stick giveaway? Um, I didn't pick a winner yet. So we gave away a Y branch. I just didn't get around to picking a winner. What's your thoughts on pumpkin coffee? Ugh. I would love a nine by nine oil skin cloth tarp with lots of tie outs on it. Maybe your wish is gonna come true really shortly, like by next month. I'm gonna do some cold primitive camping for my mental health. I'm intending using hot rocks to stay warm. I've never done it, any tips? Okay, um, here's what I'm gonna say, because I put a video out um, about tips around camp, like when you're getting a better night's sleep, stuff that I do. There was a lot of things in there about we'll warm up rocks. I don't know if these people just saw this like on a show and then they're like, oh, I'm gonna do it, or if they actually do it, because I don't know the people who are leaving the comments. I personally, the only thing I've ever really experimented with hot rocks was boiling water with hot rocks. It's a cool exercise to like to do and see how it works, but you need to find the right rocks. And on top of that, the rocks are all ashy and dirty. So, I mean, people saying they put these in their sleeping bags or down in their pants near their private stuff, whatever they were saying, I don't know if it's gonna be accurate and true or not. Why don't you just heat up your water bottle? It just seems that much better. And on that note too, tip number six, of camping outside. It's sort of gross to some people. Some people love it. I've done it in the past. I think it's a definitely a viable option if it's super cold out. If you have your water bottle in with you, warm water, when it cools down, dump it outside your shelter. Step number six, pee in the bottle, close the lid. Warm water yet again, you're usually good till the morning. Just don't drink out of your buddy's bottle ever or rub your lips all over the bottle, pretty gross. Also make sure you dump out the bottle, put some water in, boil it, 
and you'll be good to go. Oh, so you're the president now. Congratulations on your promotion. Yes, and this is my presidential bunker. This went from mayor, forest mayor, to a forest senator or something like that, to president of forest. But now I'm hiding out in a bunker. Where are you from? The whole coal cracker thing? <clears throat> there is something in my throat and I can't have a beer because I have stuff going on tonight that I can't be half lit for. So I have to drink water and it's not washing down whatever is stuck in my throat. So somebody asked, where am I from? It sounds like coal cracker. Um, my accent from the Skook. So I am from Schuylkill County, Pennsylvania. So we're the Eastern side of Pennsylvania, best county in the state and the toughest and we can drink more than anybody else. Do you recommend a good high quality snowshoe manufacturer? Before I show the snowshoes that I actually have here, this is a full disclaimer. We do not get enough snow here to utilize these things all that much. I'm gonna say uh, in a good year, we might get three good snowstorms that I need to use these for two or three days. After that, normally the snow packs down and we don't need them anymore. Um, so I push it sometimes and I'm like walking across grass with them because I wanna use them more. Um, these are uh, Faber snowshoes, F-A-B-E-R. That probably ain't gonna pick up on camera. Traditional looking bear paws. I even have the cotton webbing. I really like those things. And they seem to be holding up well. They, of course, they require maintenance. So the reason that I said that um, disclaimer at the beginning, I don't get to use them as much as guys up north do by any means. So, I mean, I think they're good, but I, and I mean, I guess it depends on your activity level. I wouldn't go to like REI and ask one of them people, unless it's somewhere that they use snowshoes all the time. I have nothing else to say about that. Hey Dan, what was Horace Kephart really like? Um, so a lot of people might not know this. We all look up, I feel like, the Horace Kephart a lot because he put a lot of good information out there, but he was a drunk. And I'm not just saying that, that is legit, like that is written material, that he was a drunk, he left his family for the woods. So there, there's a really big long backstory with him. It's quite interesting if you read it. Um, but overall, I mean, as far as take that out of the mix, what he gave back to the our community, a lot. Hi Dan, me and my daughter love watching your videos. Luckily she understands your sense of humor. Dan, have you ever fought a bear with a sharp stick? No, but one goal of mine, I want to try to kill a deer with a knife. Like at some point, I feel like maybe I'll be leaning against a tree, thinking about just random things. A deer is gonna walk by, pull out my coal cracker knife, jump on a deer and stab it. And I don't know if that falls within the regulations of the Pennsylvania Game Commission, but next time I see the officer of my wildlife management unit, I'm gonna ask them. If I have appropriate license, can I use a knife to kill a deer? How do I sign up for your classes and do you give, do you even watch my videos at the end of every video? It says coldcrackerbushcraft.com. I didn't mean to jump down your throat, but how do you sign up for the classes? So you do go to coldcrackerbushcraft.com, link, link, link. So honestly, go there. We have a lot of good information. We have cool products and if you click on our courses, they're all listed. Under the courses, our 2020 schedule is listed. It's also all the gear is listed there too. So you go through, figure it out. Any questions, info at coldcrackerbushcraft.com and somebody will get to you and they'll answer your questions pretty quickly. The other thing too is on our homepage now, and I didn't change it yet because I'm the one that controls this part of the website. Um, if you click on the thing, it says 2020 schedule. Now there was two questions and I'm gonna go on another rant quick. There is a class listed survive and another class throat issue. Another class, um, modern bushcraft. Modern bushcraft in the summer, it's gonna probably be two days long. Um, Dutch from Dutchware and Alex will be up for that. It's a lot of hammocks, more modern gear, a lot of the Yuko gear that I use, um, tied in with some more traditional stuff. We're gonna have projects and uh, we'll eat really good there in a the class. That's gonna be a fun class. We'll do some splicing, all that kind of stuff. Survive, you don't have to bring anything to the class. You're gonna get the gear when you get here. So the price tag's gonna be a little bit higher on that, but you're gonna get some high quality gear and that's probably gonna be two days also. So you get there early, you're there the next overnight, and then the next day in the evening you leave. It's gonna be fun. That's gonna be a good class too. But they're not listed yet. We're still working on them descriptions and laying stuff out. AG Survival, what knife was that that I had? 
I don't know. And I don't have it on me right now. I wish I knew what knife that was. I'll look that up and get, I'll leave in the comments below if I can find it. I, I, I will. I feel bad because you always comment and your boy's ready for his first knife and you're going to get that one. And I think that's a good choice. All right, so this uh, next comment I was going to, because I saw this, um, the guy just goes on and on and on. His name's John. John, if you're watching, he just went on and on and on. Um, here's the thing. Um, he's going on about alone. Why didn't we do this? Why didn't anybody do that? He would do this. Um, listen, at the end of the day, they don't put everything on the show that people do. There's a lot of restrictions. There's a lot of things you're not allowed to do. There's things that you are not allowed to do. <laughs> There's all this different stuff going on. Plus you're filming, plus they're editing it out. So it's always easy to sit at home and say, and I did the same thing at other seasons. I'm like, they should do this. Why don't they do that? Um, there's a lot of stuff that went on with all the contestants that you listed that um, they probably do, but the, the shows doesn't show everything. They just want drama. They want somebody's crying and then they're happy. Then they catch a fish and then they, they contrast that with me starving to death and then somebody's angry and the next person's happy, like that's what they're shooting for. They're not shooting, it's not hardcore survival. You want hardcore survival? I don't know, I'm, this channel's not even hardcore survival because we like to laugh and have a good time in the woods. So John, I'm not trying to get down on you. That was a super long message. I wasn't gonna read through the whole thing, but that's what you have to realize with any of those shows, specifically that show. So it's easy to say, do these things. Maybe they were being done. Maybe some of that stuff people didn't do, but you know, at the end of the day, everybody's just trying their best out there. And I don't think every, anybody out there has the right answer because you don't know what your position is, where your spot is, what's going on. Sarah, now you should know this because you've been at my classes already. Basic bushcraft and advanced bushcraft, and you used an ax at both. Frozen wood, you need to use your ax. Put the saw away, don't pull a knife out, use an ax. Split it apart. Problem solved. The other issue though too that I did speak about in the classes recently is with frozen wood, it, sometimes it's hard for individuals to decide is it dead and dry, is it dry and damp, or is it green wood? Okay, because there's no leaves. So uh, you need to look, is the bark falling off? You need to split it open and look, is it dry inside? Like there's a lot of different factors and things you can do, but at the end of the day, Sarah, just use your ax. I have an ax handle here. Okay, speaking of beer, what's your favorite oat soda? Does that mean beer, oat soda? I never heard of oat soda, I, and I don't know. If, if this is like a blue angel, haha on me, I don't know. Um, I do like Coors Light. What do you say, because I, oh, because he wouldn't even wash his car windows with that. All right, I'm done with you now. Um, I do drink Coors Light. I like to sit and just relax. I don't, I'm not like trying to get blasted all the time. But the other thing is, I recently started drinking IPAs, which I've never been into. I always like heavier porters and stouts. Now I'm like right in the middle. Like a, like, a, like a brown ale is where I'm at. I don't know. I go through these stages of different stuff. I just like beer in general. Matt Harris, whoa, you lost some weight because I'm, I'm a shredded machine, Matt. Shredded. I always have went up and down. Now, not like unhealthy, like, oh, I'm, like I purposefully, I'm like, I wanna lift really heavy now, I eat, I try to bulk up a little bit. Then I'm like, I wanna get, I wanna get lean, super athletic, that I can run, move, do everything, trim back down. Recently though, with the school and everything else, way easier to just stay like leaner and just super like agile. So I'm gonna answer this. This was uh, Jonathan Simmons. What's your everyday carry for the second amendment when you're in the woods? Um, I don't carry a gun all the time in the woods. So if you're gonna come and mug me, that's probably time to do it. Um, I used to do that and then I was like, I, I'm not, there's not many predators here. Um, there's, well actually there's no predators here that are gonna like maul me and kill me. So I just don't worry about that. As far as running people in the woods, I don't worry about that. Like, if, if somebody's gonna find me in the woods and try to hurt me, like, it's bizarre. They were coming after me anyway. If I'm out and about in town and I'm concealed carry, then like a Glock 19. I'm a Glock guy. I'm not a 1911 Glock guy. I just, uh, nothing against 1911s. I just like, like, I always used a Glock. Back, I was really into competitive shooting. I would use that, beat it up really bad. And that was it, I just always liked them. So that's what it is. 
appendix carry too. Bam. All right, I don't even know how to pronounce your name, but I like this comment. I just recently discovered your channel and I'm enjoying it immensely. My wife and I were sitting here at the kitchen listening to the comments about liquid smoke, so I Im immediately reached over to cover and applied it to my neck. Her reaction was a lot less than I expected. Perhaps she's worried to hundreds of women who will be flocking to me at the mall. You are right. It happens. It's exactly what happens. All of a sudden your wife, I don't, I don't like that. Take it off because they know when you get to the mall, or you get to Target, or if there's time, Bed Bath & Beyond, that's what's gonna happen. Women all over you. They'll take you in Bed Bath & Beyond. A lot of anorak questions too. Maybe some of these people message me on other, other platforms too because they thought their question wasn't gonna get answered. As far as for anoraks, I have that Duluth anorak that was super expensive. I walnut dyed it. This thing. All right, I, you, I did wear that a lot in the past. Very good condition though, very good condition. It's just super expensive and then uh, I have a Lester River Bushcraft, like wool. Um, I don't know if there's, they're looking for basically like a cheaper version, I don't know. They're the two that I've worn and I, they're both good. I honestly have really fell in love more with zippers on the front of stuff more than pullovers because that way I can open it up, take it off if I'm working. I hate pulling, ugh, I don't like that. Riverbent Longbow Outdoors, yet no mini bike. No mini bike yet. The mini bike is painted black. I don't know if I had it painted black or it was a blue last time everybody saw it. I don't know. What's your favorite shelter to make? Pros and cons, please. By the way, you're the effing man. <laughs> oh, Brandon Morton. All right, um, I guess you're looking for any shelter overall. I like a uh, lean-to, center pulled up. So like eight by eight, center pulled up. It gives you that nice section inside. That's just always been it um, as far as setting up shelters. If it comes to just big overall, like I could have any kind of shelter out in the woods, my yurt is awesome. If it comes to like um, debris shelters or anything else, the wigwam, I mean, you can't build that in a day. That thing was awesome. Unfortunately though, rest in heaven wigwam, it, it collapsed, it's done. Now we didn't do much maintenance at all. We did repair it a little bit over time but the sticks inside were rotten and the bark was just getting old and I sort of fell into it twice and uh, we moved it once. All of that stress on it just made it start to collapse in one side. Tim Sterling, my seven and four year old think you're a Viking. Well, I, I sort of look like a Viking. I should be on the show Vikings. If anybody out there is watching this and they know anybody on the production team of Vikings and they just want an extra, it'd be cool if I could just run through an area with like a Viking ax swinging it. I don't even, Jake Adams, I don't even understand your thing other than, at the beginning of it I don't understand. Basically what he's saying at the second part of the question though is that I should collaborate with Chris Ramsey. I'm assuming Chris Ramsey the magician that does all the puzzles. If it's that guy, that'd be awesome. Bring back the woods podium. Again, like the wigwam, the thing fell over, it cracked because it was rotted wood and the top fell off. It's just a nightmare, everything's falling apart. People feel like I have some kind of sickness because I'm thin. It just, I, I watch my macros. Protein, carbs, fats, trim down. That's all I'm doing. I'm not sickly, super ripped. I just clean and pressed 265 this week. That's solid, I'm really happy with that number. Not as good as it could be, but I'm happy with that number. Uh, no, now, all right, now Jake, you, if you're gonna comment, this is why I didn't understand your first one. Your second one, has anybody ever told you you look like Chris, Chris Ramsey, the magician, not the comedian? All right, yeah. No, they haven't, but now that I know what I do, I'm gonna message them. When selecting ferns for toiletry, do you shake them? Do you this? So when I am gonna pick ferns, I do give them a good shake. I rip them, I bend them, I look at them, wipe them behind. That's just what I do with them. Why not be like Nick? Remember Nick? Nick in the other videos asked 47,000 questions, yet I didn't see one from Nick. I hope I didn't scare Nick off. But it was funny how many questions Nick had asked. But what I'm gonna say is this person is asking. Oh, don't, please, all right. I clicked the button. I thought I lost where I was at in the comments. They're asking if I ever found arrowheads in my neck of the woods. Never. 
This is asking about my son Jax. He's doing good. Just started wrestling, started Cub Scouts. The troop needs to get fixed up. I feel like I'll end up having to take that over to get the kids to stay in the woods. But anyway, if you're in Cub Scouts and you're running the troop, just I would say go through the book maybe, not make up random things to do. We're gonna work that out. But the second part of this question was, he wants to make his own bushcraft channel. I'm like, yeah, but you gotta make videos. You can't just randomly. So then he was gonna make a video about skateboarding and bushcraft. I said, I don't know if that's gonna work. So we're back and forth. At some point, he'll be in future videos and then he wants his own channel. Because he wants, he said, his own play button, gold play button. I said, well, that's a million subscribers, buddy. Good luck. You ever use wood augers while making bushcraft stuff in the woods? Yes, it's not ultralight. It's gonna be heavy. It's gonna um, be a little bit of pain to carry in if you're going far in. But all the furniture that we have at camps have been made with wood augers, um, scotch eye augers, um, bit and brace, all that kind of stuff. And we actually use all those tools at our upcoming Bushman class. It's sweet. Are you Polish? What's up with your mustache? I am Polish, like 90 some percent Polish. So I say 100%. And uh, I don't know. I think the last video I got my hair cut, I got my beard trimmed and they trimmed this like tight, tight in here. So it was like over exaggerated how good looking I was. The knife you described that you want is the farmer. I did realize this. Now this is not the knife that I showed, but the farmer, Somebody at a class had it. Nate Valentine was his name and he had that knife at the class. He said, this is the knife you're looking for, the farmer. I said, well, I'm gonna have to get myself one. Give my kid back his knife. Why do people think they want a big shelter? It's a waste of tarp, time, calories, body heat. I could not agree more with that. Here's what I think with this. And we're gonna talk about this in future videos with emergency survival shelters. So we are coming out with a shelter. I'm not giving you much more than that. I know people are probably gonna be pretty excited about it. Um, but at the end of the day, if you're thinking emergency, it should not be a big monstrous shelter. Like get under it, are you protected? That's what you need. Maybe you want something you could sit under or you know, have just extra room to be able to move around it and that's fine. But when you start getting these shelters that are so massive that you could fit a family of five underneath it, it's just too much. It's, it, I believe it's too much. Just simple, easy, sleep under thing, get out there in a day. And then Kevin wrote about the AeroPress video, enjoyed it, but he ended up getting some Java drips instead. I think they're the ones that fold open, just pour over or something. Um, if not, I don't know what a Java drip is. But anyway, those coffee videos are really like, I just like to drink coffee. So I like to share it, I think it's fun, it's something different. It's not the same old like, cowboy coffee, I'm swinging my pot around. I mean, it, just to have a good time with all this different stuff, you know what I mean? And then just I think to finish this up, a couple, a couple quick things of recent videos, questions that are like playing inside my head. Okay, first one, a lot of people asked about that hang bag in the last video, does it bounce all around? So it looked loose because when I picked it up, it was sliding down the straps. But when I put my backpack on, it tightens up, up against the back of the backpack, against me, doesn't move. It is super comfortable. Like if it's built for that backpack almost. Now we tried it on different day packs like the Duluth day pack and the Frost River day pack, like the smaller envelope style, works great also. One of the biggest questions too that I get outside of just this question and answer is about food, taking food into the woods, what do you actually do? So for me personally, okay, I mean, it, it depends on what you're doing, how far you're traveling. I said this before, if I'm going out and I'm gonna just be out for the day, some protein bars, fine. If I'm gonna be out for a while, maybe some cheeses or dried meats. They sell bags of tuna, bags of rice, all that stuff you can just heat up in your pot or in your cup and have at it. So all that stuff is really easy. If I'm gonna be gone long, or if we're gonna purposefully camp, and it's not a location that's super far, I and it's cold, I throw everything in a five gallon bucket, like this, and then all that I do is take this into camp with me. I can sit on it, and uh, all my food's inside there. So I try to just do simplistic stuff like that. Of course, you're not gonna carry a big bucket into a place. So you gotta sort of pick and choose those battles. It's hard to say in any video you do related to gear though, you know, this is exactly what I'm packing because it's gonna vary. It depends on the time of the year. It depends what you like eating at the time. It depends how long you're gonna be gone. So a lot of that different stuff. 
And then last but not least, uh, thanks for tuning in. I wanted to get this done, answer some of these questions. <sighs> it feels good when you get this done. I gotta edit it still, but pop my collar. I feel pretty good about the whole thing. So, if you're new, thanks for watching. Leave a comment, question below for the next question and answer. Check us out at coldcrackerbushcraft.com. Gear, merchandise, all that cool stuff. 2020 schedule is now up and live. All right, so till the next question and answer, stay in the woods or inside your trapping house if you have a cool man shelter like this. I feel like I need to pick something up and do like throw something, but.